ओके जी बिस्मिल्लाकुम वरहमल वेल रिस्पेक्टेड पार्टिसिपेंट्स आई एम श्योर आई एम ऑडिबल एंड द सेकेंड पॉइंट ऑफ चॉइस द सेकेंड इज विजिबल सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग इवन ए सिंगल सिंगल सेकेंड let us move towards our screen and let us try to understand the agenda of today's class definitely we have two mock sessions but after that we are going to discuss some previous interview questions in today's discussion we are going to discuss approximately 20 plus questions the the topics will be ten topics in total whereas the questions they will be 20 plus so you are supposed to note down all these topics one by one that we will discuss at the end of today's session and after that definitely the things will be easy for you meanwhile it is pertinent to mention here that all the questions that we are going to discuss all the topics here they have been taken from the elizabethan age and even if we talk about the age that there is you know there was associated with the sonnets there was associated before that i think that we have completed in a previous session so you know still bits so we are going to conclude the elizabethan age the very tudor period and uh, after that inshallah we are going to move on from it so we have two interviews scheduled for today's class so miss huma and miss hamna well uh, let's proceed further towards our first mock interview miss huma is there oh yes miss huma is okay miss huma you request to please unmute yourself Musuma, you can unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Assalamualaikum. Yes, yes, sir. Waalaikum salam, Musuma. How are you? I'm fine, sir. So you are enjoying the political uncertainty in the country. Yes, sir. Good. That's very fine. So there were elections in your hometown as well. No, sir. Okay. So you didn't enjoy the. very fever of elections yes, all right uh, so uh, miss uma should we proceed further with formal discussion yes sir sure all right so okay so my first question is about your introduction so uma please introduce yourself i am uma riyaz from tehsil gojra district proper taxing and i did my masters in english from muslim post graduate college Uh, affiliated with the, the Sogoda University. Mm hmm. Okay. Anything else? Sir? Oh yes, you are supposed to mention your graduation, maybe from where you have completed your graduation. And I have completed my graduation from Government Degree College, Gojra. So, what were your optionals in your graduation? my option was persian and geography so uh, persian geography and what else because you were supposed to take another option as well so what is the name of the third subject there were two sir there were two subjects miss uma you have completed your masters in english but you have not taken english literature as an option while in your graduation yes so sir. if you if you if you were inclined towards literature linguistics and english so why not from graduation why uh, you know in your masters so what was why this sudden change what are the reasons behind this sudden change i think uh, um, this is not a big city so we don't have much option to choose So these are the best. Mm-hmm. 
So why am I English? Why not am I geography? Why not am I Persian? Why am I English? We don't have these both options here for master's degree. So in case you were given the option to go for geography or Persian, you would have opted that option. So you were forced yes. to go for for English because you were yes, given you can the option. Say. So yes. Right. So you are here by force. Indirectly, we can say so. You are not here by choice. Yes, I must okay. say this. Okay, all right. So, Miss um, Huma, teaching is something that is related to your will. That is, you know, teacher is a person who is going to give wings to the students. He teaches the student how to fly in the air. So don't you feel a force teacher who is not even sure about his subject and who is here out of choice, you know, just by circumstances. So circumstances led the teacher here. So why do you feel you can be an asset for higher education department? Why we should choose you as a lecturer? And why we should ignore those people who are here by choice? So please read your question. My question is, you have mentioned that your master's in English was out of your choice. So you are here in, in, in interview sessions because your master's in English is there, okay? Yes. My question is that because you were not interested in your, in, in your master's, still you proceeded further, you embarked upon the journey of this master's, so why we should prefer you? Why we should give you preference for other candidates? How you can be a wonderful teacher as compared to the other people who are interested in English literature and who pursued their degree because they were interested in literature and linguistics and English? So what I can say is if I didn't have any choice other than this, or, but you know, uh, the PPSC right now, they, ha they have choice. Okay, so they uh, yes. call five people against one seat, na? So yes. how, how you are going to say that they should choose you? What are the specialties that they should try to, that you are going to mention there, that all right, these are the qualities that surpass my personality or others? Okay, just leave this question, Ms. Huma. Just talk about your hobbies. What are your hobbies? My hobby is cooking. All right. Okay. Your hobby is cooking. So I'm sure yes. you know a lot many chefs who are serving across the country. So what is the name of your favorite chef from Pakistan? I follow Nahid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, how many total? Uh, can you just name out five famous chef of Pakistan? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Nahid, you have already mentioned. Maybe you want to talk about Mehboob Khan. Maybe you talk, want to talk about Zubaida Tariq. Maybe you want to talk about yeah. uh, Fatima Ali, if I'm not wrong. So, okay. So what is the name of your favorite genre? Maybe you're interested in, actually. You're interested anywhere in literature and in English? poetry. And I'm interested in poetry. Oh, that's fine. So what is the name of your favorite poet? Robert Frost. Robert Frost. So can you name of the favorite poem that you have learned by heart of Robert Frost? Because Robert Frost is your favorite one, so I'm sure that you know a lot many things about Robert Frost. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Please. Um, Come on. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Okay, what was the nationality of Robert Frost? So he was American. Yes, that's true, American. American yes. he was. So, uh, American poet. But you know, Robert Frost was publishing his work initially in another country. In New England. It was a, in New England, oh yes, it yeah. was. So what are the main topics? What are the areas of Robert Frost? Like Wordsworth, imaginative one, or he was a realistic person. Works Robert Frost in actual, which life has been depicted by Robert Frost. He gives a realistic picture of rural images and uh, if uh, we talk mm -hmm. about Robert uh, Frost's work, it is principally associated, associated with the life and uh, landscape of the New England. And uh, so he was a poet of tradition mm -hmm. versus form and... Uh, How many times he was nominated for Nobel Prize? I think 35 times. I'm not sure. Okay, because but he didn't sure. get anyone. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So, do you remember any other prize that Robert Frost got in his life? Yes, he got fourth for this prize. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. That's enough. Okay, so Robert Frost wrote a lot of many poems, a lot of many things. So I'm sure that you have read Mending Wall. Mending yes, Wall, that is a very famous one. Okay. Yes. So can you just recite some lines of Mending Wall? I uh, starting line. Oh yeah. Starting line. Starting lines are like this. Something there is uh, that doesn't love a wall that uh, sends a frozen ground. Well, under it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yes, that's cool. Another mm -hmm. famous line from this poem Good fences make good neighbors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many total poems by Robert Foss you have read so far? Have you read The Road Not Taken by Robert Foss? Yes, sir. Okay, so what is the main theme of the road not taken? Theme of uh, the road not taken is to making choices. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? And uh, actually he wrote this poem for his friend, Edward Thomas. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So what is the basically moral message of the road not taken by Robert Foss? Moral message? Yeah, that poem is giving us a moral, no? So what is the moral? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you point out some symbols that Robert Frost has used in this particular poem? The symbols. In this poem. Maybe the, yeah, the from journey is the road. Yeah, can you point out just two symbols from Robert Frost's poem? Hmm. Okay. Uh, any other poet apart from Robert Frost that you, that you have read in this one? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And what is that? Keats, John Keats. John Keats. Can you name out the two contemporary writers of John Keats? Wordsworth and uh, Shelley. All right. 
so why you like keys why not pv shalin why not also lord byron no sir i didn't say that i like i said i read oh, okay so you have read keats yes. so uh, john keats fall in a particular domain that is romanticism early romanticism or he falls in elder romantic poets or the younger romantic poets he is in early romantic so he falls in elder romantic poets yes. okay fair enough okay so what was the age of john keats when he was engulfed by tuberculosis by tb yes sir he is professor keats i'm sorry please come again i couldn't get you so please question feed yo all right all right i'm asking what was his age what was the age of keats when he was engulfed by tuberculosis he was 19 years old all right for enough okay just leave this literature and all the things yes what do you feel about the so uh, when you completed your masters ms soma yes sir when you completed your masters when did you complete your... in 2017 okay so what you are doing since then after completing your masters what you are doing since then I had taught uh, at the educators campus Kochra, but uh, after that I was giving home tuition. So you're a teacher basically. So why you didn't join any institute? Like you didn't apply for school education department for jobs there in school education department? Yes. So there was. some personal issues i couldn't continue the job okay talking about gojra gojra is approximately 50 kilometers away from faisalabad yes, what is sir. the total distance between gojra and lahore i think 250 kilometers okay all right 250 you have mentioned okay on it so what is the basic reason why gojra why is there any etymological reason etymological etymological history of this city why this city is having this name that we had uh, it is uh, because of that gujra community and nothing else okay all right so gojra is you know a very famous tehsil of the batiks and yes. uh, gojra is famous for a lot many things can you just yes. name out some hockey players from gojra because gojra is famous for hockey and is having an international hockey stadium there as well yes. so and there was a time when gojra a lot of players from gojra they were the part of the hockey team so the name of just three yes. hockey players from your city mohammad azam mohammad qasim sahir zaman uh, imran shah and many others oh yes that's true so uh, do you know abdul qadir alwi no sir Do you know Amjad Varaj, Bilal Varaj, and these yes, people there? Yes, yes, yes. Sir Abdul Qadir Awan. Alwi. I'm not talking about Awan. Okay. Okay. It's Alwi. Alwi. What is the reason why these two brothers? I'm talking about these Varaj brothers. One is there in PTI, and the other was is in an another political party. So, do you feel in this way a city can bring some better results? i'm talking about in terms of prosperity do you feel having two brothers of same family into different parties can bring prosperity to the city is it a politics of clans only 
are do you feel they are just there in the politics for their own cause and they have nothing to do with the services yes, of the nation and the service of the people yes mm -hmm. only political causes they have nothing to do with the people and mm. for the city gujarat is very famous for food items as well so can yes, you just sir. name the famous food Man items sweet oh yes so i'm sure that you have heard the name of abhishek food as well yes sir yes sir okay all right uh thank you so much my last question will be definitely about uh, your city and there will be a difficult question not the simple question that i have asked right now uh, my question is what do you know about the total population of your city do you have any random idea as per the census of 2020 2017 what is the total population it was uh... I think it was uh, more than one lakh. Yes, it was. But yes. uh, okay. So thank you so much, Ms. Uma. We are ending your formal discussion. Okay. So Ms. Uma, during your interview, you, up, up, you, up, under pressure, feel, कर रहे थे. आपके क्वेश्चंस काफी इजी थे और कोशिश भी यही की गई थी कि आपके प्रेशर से आउट ऑफ प्रेशर रखा जाए. So, uh, क्या लगता है आपने अपनी आपकी परफॉर्मेंस कैसी रही अच्छी नहीं थी आपको क्या लगता है फिफ्टी प्लस आप पे आप इस पे डिजर्व करेंगे नो no. अच्छा चलिए अब हम देखते हैं कि इस नो को हम कैसे जस्टिफाई कर सकते हैं <coughs> uh, <coughs> बहुत ज्यादा ब्राइट चांसेस हैं कि आपके इंटरव्यू पैनल यहाँ से आगे प्रोसीड ही नहीं करेगा अगर आपने इस तरह से इन क्वेश्चंस को चेंज ना किया आ, कि आप जो हैं वो यहाँ पे बाय फोर्स हैं आप बाय चॉइस नहीं हैं सो so, पहली बात तो ये है कि अगर आपने अपने मास्टर्स में आ, अपने ग्रेजुएशन के सब्जेक्ट बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है पूछे जाते हैं उनमें अगर आपने नहीं पढ़ा तो ये जो बाय फोर्स वाला है इट मीन्स कि उनको आपने तो बाई फोर्स मास्टर्स इन इंग्लिश कर लिया लेकिन कमीशन के पास कोई जवाब नहीं है कि वो एक ऐसे स्टूडेंट को जो है वो जॉब पे लेके आए जो बाय फोर्स है वहाँ पे ठीक है और वो अच्छा डिलीवर नहीं कर सकता ठीक है सो यू नीड टू डेफिनेटली रिफाइन योर आंसर्स हेयर कि क्यों आपको हायर करना चाहिए मुमकिन है कि आपका एक अच्छा जवाब ये था कि आप जो है आपकी सिटी में या आपके कॉलेज में उस वक्त चूंकि ये ऑप्शन नहीं था और आपने इसलिए ऑप्ट नहीं किया क्योंकि आपको किसी ने इनकरेज नहीं किया बट लेटर ऑन आप लिटरेचर में ही इंटरेस्टेड थे इसी वजह से तो आपने मास्टर्स में इंग्लिश में लिटरेचर या लिंग्विस्टिक्स में अपने मास्टर्स को किया आप पहले ही करना चाह रहे थे लेकिन पहले सर्कमस्टेंसेस ने आपको अलो नहीं किया लेकिन बाद में आपने पूरी कोशिश करके किया आप कुकिंग में इंटरेस्टेड हैं ये हमें एक वाइब देता है कि आप जो है वो हाउस वाइफ हैं जिसके बाद अगला क्वेश्चन ये वाला आता है कि आपने ट्वेंटी के बाद से अभी तक क्या किया ठीक है अगर आपने अपनी इंगेजमेंट्स को बड़ा सिंपल सा बताया कि आई एम जस्ट टेकिंग सम होम ट्यूशन एंड आई एम सिटिंग हेयर एंड देयर एंड आई एम जस्ट स्क्रॉलिंग डाउन द सोशल मीडिया एंड दिस एंड दैट तो देखिए एक सीट के अगेंस्ट पांच लोगों को बुलाया जा रहा है ठीक है तो उन्होंने डेफिनेटली उसको कॉल करना है जो कि इसमें बेहतर परफॉर्म करेगा ठीक है आपने रॉबर्ट फ्रॉस को जो है वो लिया रॉबर्ट फ्रॉस की प्रेरणा आपको एक पॉइंट जो है वो उसमें से आप कुछ कोट कर पाए जॉन कीट्स जो है वो एल्डर रोमांटिक्स में कथन फॉल नहीं करता है एल्डर रोमांटिक्स में आपके पास जो है विलियम वर्जवर्थ आ जाता है एस सी कॉवरेज आ जाता है और जबकि यंगर रोमांटिक्स में आपके पास तीन रोमांटिक्स आते हैं और कीट्स जो है वो उनमें फॉल करता है और ये तो लॉर्ड बाइडन पी वी शैले वो सबसे छोटा है ठीक है और ये 19 साल की उम्र में नहीं गया था ये 25 फाइव ईयर्स की एज में इसकी डेथ हुई थी सो so, कीट्स जैसे नाम के ऊपर जी प्लीज यहाँ से इंटरव्यू जब आपका शुरू हुआ तो इस तरह के क्वेश्चन ने ऑलरेडी माइंड बना दिया कि आप जो है आपको कितने मार्क्स मिलने चाहिए यहाँ तक जो है वो सिर्फ इससे आगे क्वेश्चंस इसलिए पूछे गए थे कि क्या आप 50 से ऊपर मार्क्स रिजर्व करते हैं 
या अगर हम 50 मार्क्स देते हैं तो वो जस्टिफाइड हैं या नहीं है ठीक है अगर ये इंटरव्यू यहाँ से आगे नहीं चलेगा इस इंटरव्यू की मैक्सिमम भी लाइफ हुई तो वो शायद दो से तीन मिनट होगी मैक्सिमम ये मैंने आपको बताया और मिनिमम हो सकता है कि वो आपसे जब ये पूछें कि आप जो है वो बाई फोर्स इधर थे तो उसके बाद वो आपका शुक्रिया करेंगे थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बींग हेयर आप जा सकते हैं आपका इंटरव्यू हो गया ठीक है डेफिनेटली देर नॉट गोइंग टू से आपके रिजल्ट क्या रहे लेटर ऑन जो है वो इन इन डिस्टेंसेस को लाहौर से देखना इसलिए जरूरी है कि लाहौर आपका प्रोविंशियल कैपिटल है ठीक है अक्टूबर टेक्सिंग की तहसील को जरूर पढ़ लीजिए तहसील कह रहा हूँ डिस्ट्रिक्ट को जरूर पढ़ लीजिएगा आपका डिस्ट्रिक्ट वो है आपकी डिवीजन फैसलाबाद है इनको जरूर देख लीजिएगा ठीक है गुजरा और हॉकी जो है दोनों इंटर रिलेटेड है आपकी सिटी जो है वो बहुत फेमस है हॉकी के लिए आज से इसकी हिस्ट्री को जरूर देखा करें और आपने जो हॉकी मैचेस पाकिस्तान में विन किए हैं उनमें आपके सिटी का क्या रोल था और खसूस जो आपके सिटी की पॉलिटिक्स इसलिए इम्पोर्टेंट है तो बहुत ज्यादा मर्डर्स होते हैं कत्ल होते रहे हैं हिस्ट्री में कुछ कुछ साल पहले अभी भी ये सिलसिला जारी है आप सही कह रहे हैं तो पॉलिटिक्स में इसलिए जो है वो सियासत को इन्वॉल्व किया जा बाकी सिटीज में किसी की पॉलिटिक्स को इन्वॉल्व क्या तो इसकी पॉलिटिक्स के मतलब ये क्वेश्चन जो है वो आते हैं सो सिर्फ आपके इंटरव्यू का रिजल्ट में सुना जो है ये दैट इज समथिंग कि मैं डेफिनेटली uh, ये नहीं पब्लिक में बता सकूंगा लेकिन मैंने ये स्कोर आपको भेज दिया जो है बट ये 50 से नीचे है ये पास नहीं है ठीक है जो जो स्कोर था वो मैंने आपको भेज दिया वो जो था ठीक है और ये स्कोर uh, शायद जो है वो मैक्सिम स्कोर है जो आपको अवार्ड हो सके तो आई एम श्योर कि आप इसको जब नेक्स्ट टाइम आएंगे तो इसको अच्छे से जब परफॉर्म करेंगे अगर आपको कोई क्वेश्चन हो तो वो आप पूछ सकते हैं तो ऐसा नहीं क्वेश्चन दैट यू वांट टू आस्क इज़ गोइंग विद नो सर थैंक यू सो मच मिस सुमा आई एम श्योर दैट नेक्स्ट टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ वेरी वंडरफुल सेशन विद यू ओके जी सो मिस सुमा जो है उनका इंटरव्यू फॉर्मली हम यहां पे एंड करते हैं and uh, let's clear the screen and request ms hamna to unmute herself walikum assalam ms hamna how are you fine sir how are you thank you so much i'm perfectly fine and all right so Going on in uh, sir, they are absolutely fine. Mashallah, that's very good. So, well, uh, Hamna, you are going to mention your MPhil in your interview. I was just going to rely with your masters because I know your qualifications. So, I'm not going to ask this question formally. Okay, sir, I won't mention MPhil. Okay, all right. So, uh, Miss Hamna, starting from your name, what do you understand the language? Is it an Arabic name? Is it an uh, Urdu name? What is the meaning of your name, Hamna? It's it's. Uh mm-hmm. huh. Sir, you are not audible to me. Okay, I'm not audible to you. All right. Is it clear? The rest of the participants, please do confirm in the chat box. Am I audible? Okay, I am. The rest of the participants, they can hear me. Okay, Miss Hamna, you need to recheck your inter- internet connection, maybe. Okay, Miss Hamna, you have uh, okay. Your mic is open. I think um, is problems. So Hamna, please do unmute yourself. Hamna is not there. Meanwhile, Hamna is going to join us. Uh, respected participants. All the questions जो आपको असाइन किए जाते हैं आपकी क्लासेस में आई एम श्योर डेट यू आर मेकिंग योर ऑन नोट 
यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग द आंसर्स ऑफ दोज क्वेश्चन एंड यू आर ट्राइंग योर लाइल बेस्ट कि आप उनको अच्छे से प्रैक्टिस कर सको अगर आपसे क्वेश्चन जो है वो किसी भी डोमेन में पूछा जाता है तो आपके फिंगर टिप्स पर उनके आंसर्स होने चाहिए मेन वेल आपने एक चीज देखी होगी आपके जैसे जैसे इंटरव्यूज प्रोसीड फर्दर करते हैं जो लिस्ट है जिनमें आपकी बुक्स हैं आज जिसमें से वन से थर्टीन थी आप इन बुक्स को भी डेली बेसिस पे अपनी लिस्ट के मुताबिक देख रहे हैं आज की ही सेशन के एंड पे आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू रिकमेंड यू द नेम ऑफ ए मूवी जो आपने डेफिनेटली देखनी है दैट्स अ कंपल्सरी एक्टिविटी ठीक है वो कंपल्सरी है समझने के लिए रिनासांस और इससे रिलेटेड तमाम चीजों को डेफिनेटली uh, uh, जब हम भी अपने इंटरव्यू के प्रिपरेशन में होते थे तो ऐसे कॉन्सेप्ट्स को हमने पिक्टोरियल इमेजेस के साथ क्लियर किया जिनमें रेनासांस शामिल था जिसमें ट्राई uh, uh, जैसे जो है मूवीज शामिल हैं वॉर ऑफ फ्रोजन है टाइम एंड अगेन आपको रिकमेंडेशन हमारी तरफ से मिलती रहेंगी हाँ अगर कोई लीव करना चाहता है स्किप करना चाहता है तो वो अपनी जिम्मेदारी भी छोड़ सकता है इफ यू आर नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन प्रोसीडिंग फर्दर विद द मूवीज आपको लगता है कि नहीं मैं नहीं देख सकता सो so, आप उसको अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी पे जरूर स्किप कर लीजिएगा बट उन्हें ये रिकमेंडेशन नहीं है ठीक है सो मीन वेल मिस हमना जो है हमने उनका इनफ वेट किया वो हमें शायद थोड़ी देर तक ज्वाइन कर लें ओके मिस हमना इज मिस हमना इट्स मिस हमना नाजिम दिसान सो मिस हमना एम एडिबल नो Yes, sir. You are audible. Sorry for the inconvenience, sir. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Okay. So, uh, Hamna, you were mentioning, you were letting us know the meaning of your name. So, what do you mean so by you Hamna? Someone wise or intelligent, like it's related to wisdom. Okay. Is intelligent or extremely intelligent? Hamna means. I mean, wise and intelligent mixture of what you can say, both. related to okay. like intelligence or wisdom okay, so i'm not what are your hobbies what's your joining all this so um i like to collect a uh, different uh, i like to read and collect a uh, different wisdom quotes or the motivational quotes like in childhood i used to collect them from newspaper and nowadays i as we use a lot of social media and also from there i take screenshots and, I, and if i like them a lot then i uh, write them on notes and paste them on uh, my bedroom walls so it's i have a huge collection of different motivational quotes or wisdom quotes mm-hmm Can you name out five international motivational speakers? Five international motivational speakers. Miss Hamna, you have muted yourself. I'm opening your mic once again. So the question is about five motivational speakers, but internationally, not from Pakistan, because you have mentioned it's your hobby. So I'm so, sure that you know a lot of names. Sir, one is uh, Anthony Robbins. Uh, he's an American speaker, and mm-hmm. uh, he he's uh, he speaks on the like uh, uh, he he believes that uh, he, uh, on the okay, uh, one, of, one of one uh, of Britain's most Yeah. Anthony Robin is the first one. Okay, the second name. Yes, sir. Um, mm-hmm. second one is um. Uh, sir, I can't recall. Actually, I read a lot of quotes, so I don't. I don't. Uh, I can't mention specific ones like uh, any particular one. Okay, I'm sure you have mentioned uh, Anthony Robin. If I'm not wrong, when I was in my graduation, I read a book of Anthony Robbins, and the name of the book was "Unlimited Power." By the way, a very important and interesting book. So, have you read any book of Anthony Robbins? Avinkin, the giant within, maybe the life force, or the books, no. because Anthony Robbins is a very famous person. so i haven't uh, read any of his book i just uh, listen to the videos or uh, just read the quotes on the social media and that's all but okay, i've heard right. of the uh, the awakened giant about that yeah okay i'm sure that you know pakistani name hamad safi 
I'm sure that you have heard this name. He's a motivational yes. speaker as well. Hamad Safi. Yes, sir. I heard his name. His age is maybe somewhere between 12 to 16 years of age. So do you feel yes. at this age, you need a formal education instead of becoming a motivational speaker? Uh, do you feel is the perfect age to go with the motivating others when your when your own academics is not completed? So what do you feel? No, sir. I believe that uh, at such a tender age, you shouldn't be uh, like uh, giving uh, speeches or kind of uh, motive. Not the motivation. Actually, the wisdom comes with age. I believe so. So as Bacon says that at a young age, uh, you have uh, like uh, you uh, you are more of a doing thing. You should be doing, experiencing life. And with age, at the older age, uh, you should you, uh, when you have gained a lot of wisdom, then you should be. Uh, like giving it to others or uh, like uh, persuade uh, persu persuading others and that's all. So I I think that he shouldn't be uh, a motivation speaker. So as you have mentioned the name of Bacon, I'm sure that you have read Bacon and you are interested in Bacon. There's reason you mentioned Bacon. What was the nationality of Bacon? Yes. So he was English uh, and he was born in London. All right. So what is his complete name? Francis Bacon. Yeah. Are you sure? That's it? Yes, sir. That, that's what I know, sir. Fra sir Francis Bacon. I have, and most of the time I have read this. Mm -hmm. So how many books, how many culminations of Bacon you have read? So I haven't uh, read the, the mm -hmm. like I, I have on I have only uh, gone through uh, his uh, one of his book that is essays that that a conscience model or civil or moral one like uh, uh, like it had uh, a lot of fifty eight essays basically so it, uh, related to different uh, mm -hmm. different stages of life and uh, like experiences of life and different uh, domains of life. So uh, these are the ones that I like the most. So why? What that, although mean? he has written different works on political, uh, but mm -hmm. I haven't read those. Okay, fair enough. Why? Because he was a lawyer mm -hmm. and a political. He was very politically active. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, Miss Uma, what yeah. we're going to do is that I just want the answer of this question: Why we call him the father of empiricism? Uh, well, sir, he uh, he was very objective in his approach during his writings. Like he doesn't what, use impersonal what do style. You mean objective. What, what what is objectivity? Objectivity is like uh, you uh, don't involve uh, yourself. The author is uh, himself is not in the writing. So, okay, so, we are going to proceed uh, further from a, here, Ms. Uma. Just join your session once again, and we are going to proceed further from. Okay. Oh, sure, sir. Sure.